Item number six is a motion to direct the town manager to research expanded hours and programming at the community center. So moved. Sorry. Discussion, this item comes from um, Jill Waller. Jill. Thanks, Matt. So I'm putting this on tonight about the community center, and I know that Matt is still working on an RFP uh, for the current existing library. So with having that in mind, just starting back to when we first started having discussions way back when about the library, the major reason why we needed to make improvements for ADA as well as we had outgrown our child area. We need to make improvements in larger child area and restrooms. So having that in mind, I know that Matt is going to have an RFP out for that, for that at the next meeting. Taking a look at what we currently have, making use of our existing buildings, not looking to actually uh, duplicate efforts. I took a look at our community center, and actually it wasn't the first time we did this. Uh, the community center was, was first explored back in, in um, April of 2018 um, by the former town council president with a great suggestion to have the recreation committee take a look at, at the community center. Um, I believe there were several individuals from the senior community who had requested to have additional programming put at the community center. So they came to the rec board. The rec board did go on April 9th to go tour the community center. And after that, motions were set forward. And eventually, in September of last year, September 17th to be exact, the council voted to approve an RFP, approve a, a proposal for Frank Hapowitz, a, a local architect, to take a look at roofing, siding, windows, new front entrance way, um, as, as well as a little a new, new meeting rooms upstairs, um, multifunction room, um, and air conditioning. So we already had approved that. The estimate that Frank is giving us is about $400,000 or so. I know we have some renderings to, to put up tonight, too. Um, this is what Frank Kapowitz is, is saying that our new community center, and again, this was already approved by the council last year, would look at the like. A lot of people are not familiar with the community center. It's, it's right near the schools. It's right behind Sprague Park. It's a building that currently is operating, operating during the week, 8.30 to 4.30 to week, Steve. Um, Karen Flint, our, our director there, if you haven't had a chance to meet her, please do. She is an incredible person and does some great programming there. Um, but the problem she's running into a little bit is, is the activities are well attended, but they could have more activities. And that's really what was tried to address by our former town council president um, that last term, is that how can we better utilize this, this building? We have some photos to Dan, if you want to just put some photos through. Because during the day, there are many activities that take place. The building itself, Jeff Cesarini has been out there and has taken a look at it. It's in excellent condition. Um, unfortunately, last year, there was a sewage issue that came in and seeped into the lower level. But the positive part of that is that we were actually able to go and to make some improvements into the lower level. So it is, you have availability to go into the lower level for handicap accessibility. But the more exciting portion of, of this is an upstairs community room. Um, Jim commonly calls it the bingo hall, uh, a large room that has a divider that can go through. And from the, what I really would like to take a look at is moving activities that we're currently using at the library that are very important activities, lectures, movies, those types of activities, <laughs> over to the large room, which unfortunately we don't have a picture of it here, but I'm sure many of you have been in it for, for a meeting. Um, and be able to house those activities there. And by doing so, we'll then have extra room at the library that we can take a look at doing what we went to do at first, to, to increase the size of, of the children's capacity of the library. Um, what I want to do is have, have um, our, our town manager, which we shot, uh, take a look at increasing hours of operation. Currently, we're there only during the day, not at night. And we're also not there on the weekend. One of the rooms that, that is that's not shown here is we do have an exercise room. So this would open up for free for any Narragansett residents the opportunity to use an exercise room. We have all these other rooms that you can use, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts currently do use, um, but by adding additional activities, we'll be able to have a community center, a true community center. We don't have the answer to what South Kingstown has for a guild. We can have exercise classes, we can have yoga, we can have mommy and me, daddy and me, whatever we need to have at this site, it's in great shape. $400,000 is going to make it even better shape, so we'll be able to have community activities here. Um, one thing that I'd love to take a look at, I did speak to Dr. Cummings about this last, about a year ago, I know that Rick spoke with him recently about it, potentially having before school programs at the community center 
for, for, the, for the local families, to be able to have some place for the children to go before school as yet another reason why we can attract young families to the town of Narragansett. So we have this building, it's being underutilized because it's not being open on the weeknights and on the weekends. Um, so what I'd like to be able to have Sean take a look at is, number one, what could those hours be of operation? Number two, what are the services that we need? We might find out under under having Steve Wright on, and, the, and the and the Parks and Rec Department taking a look at this project. We might find out two years from now that we've outgrown this building that we need to have a senior center uh, built dedicated solely for that. Well, the good news is that we own land all around this area, so we can be able to build what we need. But right now, um, having, we're getting into budget season. We're taking a look at what we have and what we don't have to be able to duplicate. Uh, stuff like to have services that are currently at the library room over here, so then we can then take that rooms that, that would then be vacant rooms and dedicate them to the children. Again, that was what the initial um, uh, flea for the library was. It seems to be a good solution for us. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the other council members? <laughs> you go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, I just, uh, number three, yeah, one, two, three is, uh, we're probably going to need additional staff to um, expand out. Sure, but traditionally when, when community centers and parks and rec use them, we, we have part-time people that come in. So it's not salaried people, Patrick, thank you for bringing that up. We're not talking about bringing in salaried people or pensions. Um, and traditional community centers and after-school programs and, and the such, they, they do typically have a very low um, price tag attached to it. So people customarily will pay for a fee to attend a class. So if you, if you want to take a, a yoga class, you'll pay a very nominal fee, which would then go back to be the instructors. We're not looking to make money on this, but what we're looking to do is to be able to have different types of activities that the town currently does not offer to the residents at night and on weekends when the majority of people would be using them. Okay, so we're not duplicating programs, you're, you're taking, you're basically gelding the library, you're taking the programs there and bringing them to the community center? Well, if, if, if you're looking at, I'm just talking about the movies and the, and the lecture series, right, if we remove those to the community center, that would free up the rooms then that are currently being used, when, when they're not being used for a movie or the community center, they're closed up, correct? So this would then allow that those two room spaces to be dedicated to an increased area for the children's library. I know that we're talking about children's or family um, bathroom that could be there. Um, you know, so so I, I know that again that is, is looking at an RFP for the for the next meeting, and, and I know that will be included in it. All right. Anyone else? Sure. All right, Mr. Pugh. So uh, from the from the summary of this motion. Many popular functions have upgraded the existing library and can be moved to the community center. But there's plenty of parking and room for to accommodate movies, lectures, yoga, and other events. It's like I feel like I'm in the twilight zone right now. It's unbelievable. This is this is just it's ludicrous. In 2016. We had a ballot question in 2016. Acquire real estate to be used for a new library. It passed 67%. We could debate the Belmont building. We've been, we've been debating it. We're still building a new library. That's what was voted on. That is what eventually will happen. What you're attempting to do right now is to dismantle our library take programs from it and move it to the community center unilaterally. This group right here is going to dictate the programming for a facility, a department in town. It's, it's, it's almost like the GM of a, of a sports team calling the plays during a game instead of the coach. It's not our job. The board, the library board, and the director and the staff, they dictate the programs at a library. The town council does not. In fact, if you look at the charter, the town charter, there's a library section. So section 42 in the charter, powers and duties. The board of trustees shall take possession of the library and shall therefore be the legal guardians and custodians of the library. They shall provide suitable rooms for the library, arrange for the proper care of the rooms, choose one or more competent 
persons as librarians and fix their compensation and make all needful rules and regulations for the government of the library. So, we, you know, I could talk about the last election, the new library that's going to be built, but what it really comes down to it, we technically don't even have the authority to move programs from the library. That's the board, that's the board. That's the board of trustees. It's in the charter. The town council cannot meddle in those operations. Which, I mean, I'm reading the summer right here, and you're saying directly here that these are library programs that you want to move. So I'd actually like to ask the solicitor, Mark Davis, um, about this. You're reading in the charter. Is this even, I'm going to say that this is not under our authority to do, and I would like you to confirm that. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't quite prepared for that question. Um, I, I am familiar with the, um, uh, with the charter section dealing with libraries, and it is true, um, I, I, I can't recite it verbatim. Um, I have it here, but like, I haven't printed it out. But I do know it's, they, they have a great amount of autonomy um, mm -hmm. with regard to that. Um, as far as picking certain uh, f activities or functions, um, I don't know that it would be exclusive. I mean, we'd have to look into that, but for example, it's, I, I think I heard you say yoga. I don't think yoga would be a typical activity for, uh, for a library to have exclusive venue or, or jurisdiction over. So if the town wanted to offer a yoga class, I could see the town being able to offer a yoga class, as they do on the beach, for example. Um, you know, typical library functions, whatever that is, after having that long discussion a couple of weeks ago, I, I leave that for others to debate, um, would be, I think, worthy of a discussion. But um, I don't think you could say to the other members of the town council that, you know, because a library holds um, or hosts an activity such as yoga, the town's prevented from offering yoga so much. Correct, but nothing that the town council does with a vote here would have any bearing over which programs are offered at the library. Uh, they can't I, I, believe that's, I believe that's true. Correct, right? Yeah. So, the idea that we're going to move the movies from the library, you know, without even talking to the board, and just have them in the community centers to be library functions, that's invalid. I wouldn't, I'm, I wouldn't, one thing is, I wouldn't say it's invalid, especially the motion is to direct, I mean, it's a motion to direct to research expanded hours of programming. It's going to come back to us. Well, let's change the wording then. It shouldn't have, it should have nothing to do with the library. But does it say it? It says it's a motion to direct the town manager research expanded hours and programming to community center. What's the summary? Why do we write a summary if we're just going to ignore it? It's you don't amend summaries, summaries Jesse. Well, it's the you intention. It's what like your intent last night right. to sell the building. It, it, that, and, and, and we, I spent time writing my summaries and put them up, but the motion is the motion. Okay. People have a reason for putting a motion on. You could have a totally different reason for voting for that person's motion. I voted for motions before that I didn't agree with the summary on, but I agree right. with the yeah, motion. Yeah, you, you guys are going to vote three, you, you know, obviously you three are going to vote for it. You're going to try to move the programs away from the library. Well, the big part that you're missing, Jesse, is the explanation that I said about the RFP, correct? That, that Matt is working on one that will be able to make improvements to libraries. So with what I had said is that those, uh, those two, excuse me, Jesse, I'm speaking, the, the, the two rooms that we're talking about moving over, the, the lecture room and the movie rooms, that we could make those that space into a larger children's area, which was what the initial, initial goal was, is we had outgrown that. So that's what I'm saying is that it's too bad we didn't have both on the same night, but we couldn't because Matt wanted to make some changes to his RFP. But if we're going to be changing the, the existing site, because you're right, we did vote to be able to put the Belmont building up for sale. So if we're going to be changing the existing site and making improvements that are vastly needed in that, in that existing site, I agree we need to have a better library. Specifically, what we hear all is, is a children's library. Then by taking those rooms, we can accomplish that by doing that, so that was what we wanted to do, right? Have a children's library, have a children's restroom, uh, or a family restroom, whatever the, the preferred verbiage is. So we could do it in that space, and we could do it quite well. What we would need to do for the town, because we, you know, we only have so much money to use in this town, and we need to be able to have our town residents have the best resources we can afford. So we can take those services and move them over to the community center. Joe, this is, I mean, this is ridiculous. It's I mean, ridiculous. It's really It's kind of sad to make a conclusive restatement that something's ridiculous to just get applause. 
Hey, hey Chinsu, so Ricky, would you like to speak or do you want me to go to the public? Um, does anyone wish to speak on this item? Yes. <laughs> My name is Patty Arkwright, I'm the Library Director here in Narragansett. I have to speak to this agenda item. I, first, I want to say that I think you needed to come to me or the board to ask about the use of the rooms. If you eliminate the program room, there will be no story time, there will be no children's programs, because that's the only room we have to use. The quiet study, which we have to close, when we do have big programs, again, we cannot just close those rooms to make it a library for children. Um, the other thing I wanted to do before um, I heard that it was so much related to the library in your summary, maybe not the motion, but the American Library Association, which is a, a group that supports public libraries and other types, but we have a bill of rights that we follow as we um, develop policies as we provide services. And this is the library initiation, initiated programs, part of the Library Bill of Rights. Library initiated programs support the mission of the library by providing users with additional opportunities for information, education, and recreation. Library um, initiated programs should not be proscribed or removed or canceled because of partisan or doctrinal disapproval of the contents of the program or the views expressed by the participants as stated in another part of the Library Bill of Rights Article 2. Library sponsorship of a program does not constitute an endorsement of the content of the program or the views expressed by participants any more than the purchase material for library collection constitutes an endorsement of the contents of the material or the views of its creator. Library initiated programs are a library resource and as such are developed in accordance with written guidelines as approved and adopted by the library's policy making body. These guidelines should include an endorsement of the Library Bill of Rights and set forth the library's commitment to free and open access to information and ideas for all users, no, no matter what age. Thank you. Carling Town, 240 Woodhill Road. When I saw this motion on the agenda, I was pleased that Meg Rogers posted Ms. Lawless's full summary on the forum page. Yes, the community center is underutilized, and for a lot of reasons. I, for one, always thought of it as the Narragansett Senior Center, not the community center. Even its newsletter fo focuses more on seniors than anything else. Its mission statement is to promote the health and well-being of our aging population through programs and services. The last time I was in that building was years ago when my district voted there. I didn't want to base my opinion of it on that experience, so I went there today so to see if I could figure out why it is underutilized. I was there around 3.30 this afternoon, and I was the only person there except for a staff member in the office. She was very nice and told me I could look around, and she gave me a copy of the newsletter. The building is opened until 5 p.m., but I'm pretty sure I was the last person to visit for the day. From there, I went to the library. It was packed with people of all ages. There were children in the children's room. There were people in the program room. There were people reading newspapers in comfy chairs. There were students at tables. There were people in the stacks. There were people everywhere. Probably because we all know that the library is geared to the needs of all ages, not just seniors. Who will pay for the recommendations Ms. Lawler made in her summary? Obviously, the town would have to hire more employees. And why more employees to staff an empty building? Why would they get, I, I know you said they wouldn't be part of the pension system, they'd just be part-timers. I don't know how you can work that, but everything Ms. Lawler suggests would have to come from taxpayers' money. There would be no state reimbursement from Bolas as there would be for a modern library. 
There are pa patrons waiting in the wings to donate money for a state-of-the-art library here in Narragansett, as presented to you by Mr. Barry, the fundraiser. Do you honestly believe there will be patrons willing to donate to the community senior center? Does the community center have an organization like the Friends who do extensive fundraising to pay for many of the program offered at the library for free? Or will the taxpayers pick up that burden as well? Does Ms. Lawler realize the cost of doing renovations, like installing children's bathrooms for her pie-in-the-sky preschool programs, not to mention hiring certified personnel to run them? Preschool programs belong in the schools, not in the senior center. I will not even bring up the arguments others have made over access to the building during school opening and closing times. We all know what a fiasco that is. It is time for Ms. Lola to be realistic and to move forward with a library that is in the best interest of the people of Narragansett, not to waste taxpayers' money on a building that is underutilized for a thousand reasons. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin Ryan from Roxbury Avenue. So the opposition to the Belmont Library going ahead is basically financial. People are thinking it's just too much money for the town. Even though the people did approve a referendum and they knew exactly where the money was going when they approved at 67% uh, approving the, the uh, borrowing and so forth. Now, if it's a question of saving money, why would you then turn around and spend 400000 at least to renovate the community center. It makes no sense. That's a lot of money. And it could be more than that. The second thing the increase is in employee costs. There has to be someone in that building at all times. If it's going to be open evenings and weekends, that money adds up. It could be a hundred grand a year or more just to keep somebody in the building for safety reasons and the like. And third, increased costs at the present at the present library. So you're spending a lot of money a lot of money to save money. It just doesn't make any sense. Thank you. President Library. So you're spending a lot of money, a lot of money to save money. It just doesn't make any sense. Thank you. Thank you. Just for a quick second, eight o'clock we have our um just we ended up one item that is for the scheduling of a public hearing. So um but it's not, a, it's not a hearing itself. So we're gonna have a motion to schedule a public hearing to consider rezoning six properties to comply with designations assigned in the 2017 Narragansett Comprehensive Plan Land Use Map. So moved. Okay. All right, so discussion, the earliest this could be done would be April 1st. Um, is that a date that would work for everyone or would someone like to do a later date? Everyone, April 1st. I have a motion to approve this for April 1st at 8 p.m. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion approved 5 to 0. Okay. Um, so back to item number 6. Uh, is there anyone else? Yes, Ms. Shields. Gail Shields, Girls Court. I would like to ask. Ms. Lawler, Mr. Mannix, Mr. Lima, what courses you've taken in library science? What books have you read about libraries and their functions? What workshops have you been to? What lectures have you been to <coughs> that you can set yourself up as experts of what a library in the 20th, 21st century really is? You have to leave those decisions to the people.
people who know what they're talking about. It's ludicrous to think that you can come into this and decide what should be done to our library when you have no background and when the people who are making these decisions have done years of work. Thank you. Thank you. This is a first step. You know, maybe Sunset Farms, another other place we can do some yoga. I don't know. You know, there's, there's plenty. Uh, maybe we just can re maybe change the wording and say that would be a, li a library assess accessory space. So the library can have an accessory space, the community center can have an accessory space over there at Sunset Farm. It can have other spaces and other buildings run by the library. So it's still in the library purview. And therefore, it's not against the library. It's actually giving the library more space to do the loud things that they have to do, the noisy movies, whatever. And it makes it easier for them to do that. They can keep the quiet space there, and you can have the loud, especially old people. You don't have to, you have to speak very loudly, old people, as well as some kids, too. So now we have loud space there, loud space here, movies here, activities there. We can have uh, boxing going on with some of the kids. That, you know, we can have anything. The library can't be in charge of that. And they can use their accessory building to do that. Therefore, we can minimize. Uh, I, I had an article from Jamestown paper. They're, they're in the same situation in the library. And they made a choice of adding on three separate additions to the existing building. So they got 600 foot, square foot, accessory spaces to their existing library for two million bucks. And they feel they'll have a children's room, a old person's room. They'll have these different rooms for the activities and keep it away from the noisy, uh, from the quiet space. Well, I'm saying the accessory building would even be better and keep the noise away from the library. So uh, continue to look at that. I'm not saying I have the idea and I have the solution, but we should look at accessory spaces available to the library for their use in other buildings and facilities at the time. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Rosemary Smith, and I live at 24 Castle Road, and I wanted to speak to the issue tonight of um, community space in the library. So David Smith and I are the facilitators for a winter speaker series that has taken place for eight years at the library. And we bring a speaker in on the last Sunday of January, February, and March. They have been incredibly um, well attended. For example, the one that's coming up this Sunday with all seats were registered by last week, so 95 seats have already been taken, and there's a short waiting list behind it. So when we were looking to bring this speaker series, uh, and it's a collaboration between the South County Museum, the Friends of Kanacha Farm, and the Narrow River Preservation Association, we looked around the town to find a facility that would be willing to accept us and would have the technological capability, because it's usually a PowerPoint presentation that goes with it. And so, eight years ago, we made the decision to come to the library because it had the space, it had the technology, it had a, a person uh, in the name of Marilyn Sherman, who is incredibly adept at um, bringing people in and making them feel at home and operating the technology that goes along with these presentations. That was one of the reasons. The other reason was a movement that was in existence eight or nine years ago, is where is the town? Remember those days when we talked about how we can bring people downtown? And this has proved to be an unbelievably you know, successful program, these particular um, speaker series that I'm talking about, because we have brought people to the town. 
on Sunday afternoons when the other facilities were not open, when there was someone who was present who could help us out, in the restaurants around us, in the coffee shops around us, appreciate what we do because we bring business to those places. <laughs> It is looking so much better now than it did eight years ago. But to come to where the library is right now, just technologically, would cost a large amount of money for the community center. I would encourage you to do both. I want the community center to be successful. It's a building. It's near all the recreation areas. It's going to be the terminus of the bike path within the next year. It has lots of possibilities but I don't think it should replace the wonderful facility that we have up within the common room at the library. And I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Dr. Albert Alba, 24 Eagles, S. Terrace, near Gensler Island. Um, one of the things I have learned over the years, even though I have my doctorate, working at the Rhode Island State Training School for Boys and Girls for 10 years and working over 20 years at the Department of Corrections. We all have our areas of expertise. I have students in my class who have drawn beautiful pictures. Some of them look like they could qualify to go to Ryan School to design. We all have our areas of expertise. This lady who just spoke, I could not compete with her in regards to library science, several of them, because I realize I'm ignorant of those facts. But one of the things I've been taught over the years is to always respect those experts. And Ms. Lowell, I do applaud you in trying to make a recreational center. I'm all into working out, staying fit. I think that's very, very important. And making that like the South County Guild, you know, that, that would be a beautiful thing because I think working out over time is going to help us all live a lot longer. It's going to lower our medical costs down the road. So, as um, the lady just spoke. I'm all into improving that if we have the monies, but I don't feel that that building should replace any of the services of a library. And, and some people are always saying, well, you know, uh, this building is going to be added on. There's something called economies of scale. When we have everything compartmentalized, we can avoid duplication of services. So that's something we have to consider. If we have some library staff working in this area of the building, they could easily be transferred to this area of the building. Plus, when you go to the Kennedy Space Center, you go to museums, they have multiple facets where students are learning, they're watching, they go to a movie, the MP Theater. So you can, having everything together, it makes it just so much more user friendly. Thank you very much. Study. We have worked with a library consultant who has done a needs assessment. We have worked and spoken with architects and we have worked with a cost estimator. And what I also have here is the minutes from a meeting from March 2nd, 2015, when we first started working with the town council on this issue. And you, Matt Mannix, was the president. And we looked at numerous sites, including by the Senior Center. We were then told to look at four specific sites, which we did. And then we presented to the public on September 28, 2015, four sites. It was, at that time, under Matt Mannix, the town council told us to do a bond to for 2016. And we, all this time, have worked under the town council and have done what you have directed us to do. And the town responded. They responded with a big yes to that Belmont building. And for whatever reason, you continually obfuscate that building. It is clear that people want that to be the center of the town. 
And now, have you worked with those people? Have you worked with architects? Have you worked with library consultants? We have. And I don't understand why you continue to procrastinate this project. We continually have reached out to you that we will answer your questions. And we have done what you've asked us to do. But you, mathematics, Ms. Lala and Ricky Lima, you have not approached me at all in any question in regards to this. As well as there are people in the public who continually speak out against this project. And they are welcome to come to us at any time. I've spoken to this in the past. But I think it is clear that we did our research for this, that a site for the library, as directed under you from 2015, is the Belmont Building. I don't know why you continue to procrastinate on that. If you, again, if you have Thank any you. questions, you are welcome. I have 15 minutes. I no, know, I know. I sounded like you were wrapping up. But. I went, if you recall, in early 2017, when I started to have concerns about the deal, I went, I did reach out to the Library Board of Trustees at the an information session. There were about 40 people there. And you may recall that was it was not a it was not a give and, and take what? conversation. It was do this no matter what at any cost was the message that I was sent. So I'm gonna well, have some of the things you said. That. So but that's I don't want to get into give and take, but I've got to correct some of the real inaccuracies on this. It's okay to disagree, but I think there's been some things out there that have been untrue, and I'm going to start to call out the things. Okay, that and are. I think what I want to point out as so well. So I did reach out. I want to point out right now to you. But I did that reach out. In 20, January 14th of 2019, you called a work session, which we're all present. These are the notes that I had prepared in advance. And you know what, ma'am? They were all covered. I asked a few questions, but these topics were covered. But you know what? You didn't ask a single question. You keep saying that you have questions. They don't want to go through it. But we had a person from the state. You didn't ask for one question. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Shields. Robert Shields, Earl's Court. I have two questions immediately that come to my mind on this motion. One is, and I appreciate your comment, Matt Mannix, who came up with the cost estimate of 400000 and how does it break down between investment in the building and additional salaries for people, for additional people? That's one question that I think you need to answer tonight. The second concern I have is that I do not believe, and I'm, I'm speaking for some library employees, I do not believe that one of them would ever go from the library building that now exists over to the senior center to conduct anything. They would just simply not be interested in doing that. So it's up to you to staff anything that you do there on your own. Thank you. Thank you. Right, anyone from the council? Yes, Matt, I'd like to speak on this. So I sat on the Rec Advisory Board, and we were directed to go over to the community side and have a meeting, look at the facility, and see what programs we could come up with to expand that center. I'm not going to mention any names who brought the meeting to a head, but that's what we were told to do. And we had a meeting. We had a very successful meeting. There are people in this audience that actually sat in at that meeting, including myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to look into expanding some of the community center see if it's affordable for what we're looking at. Because some seniors have asked for this. This wasn't something that somebody up here dreamt up overnight last week or the month before. This was back in April 2018. That's when it was brought up. Check the record, you'll find that that's where it was. 
Okay? So that's what we're going to do. That's what this motion is about. If it doesn't pan out, then maybe it won't happen. But right now, this is what we're looking into. Okay? What's the breakdown? Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else from the council? All right, all in favor? Win, go ahead. I was at the same meeting that you were talking about for the rec board because I was on the rec advisory board too. All the discussions we had, there was not one mention of moving any program from the library to the community center. Not What's on, what's on the motion? No, it's not. What's on it's the motion the is what's recommendations of what is up at the top. So that's what I'm going by. Okay? That's what is out there. So that's what we're going to do. I just explained it, but it seems that you didn't get it. You want me to do it again? Yeah. Read it to you? No. Yeah. Yeah. The town council directs the town manager to research expanded hours and programming at the community center. That's, our meeting was about expanding programs. Our Wasn't meeting, it? Our meeting was about expanding programming, but more directed towards the school. The school expanding programs. programs. Not toward the library program. You can define it any way you want. Expanding programs. It's That's expanding, what we're going to do. Everybody knows what All right, it's not a back and forth here. Okay. All, all in favor? Uh, all, all opposed? All opposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. no. Motion approved three to two. Yeah, I'd like to move uh, 22 to 26. Oh, Matt, that'd be all right. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, item number 22 is a motion to receive and make a determination on the validity of a voter initiative to continue renovations of the Belmont building to become the Narragansett Town Library. Uh, I need a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Um, when, just before you, I'm just gonna go over the procedure and then I'd like to Thanks. hear from you. All right, so this voter initiative process Obviously, is, well, I don't know if it's obvious, but this is something um, is a is a unique uh, characteristic. Our charter, many cities and towns have it, many states have it, and um, the basic process is that an applicant files a petition with the town uh, for voter initiative. In this case, the the, the, the petitioner was uh, Mr. Hames. The town clerk then marks that um, filed. The town clerk immediately forwards that petition to the town solicitor. The town solicitor has to submit a written opinion regarding the legality of the petition to the town council within 14 days of his receipt of it being marked filed. Then at the next town council meeting, which is where we are at in the process right now, um, the council determines the validity of the petition. So that's the motion that's in front of us. And what this does is it allows the voters to directly put an item onto essentially the docket of the town um, regarding rules, regulations, ordinances and, law, ordinances and laws. I just, before you speak, Mr. Hames, I just want to make sure that from the solicitor perspective that I've characterized that correctly. Uh, the process was recited properly. Okay, so then now we're at the, we have these four items, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Those items all had initiatives. There were four that you would put forward. and. We will vote on them separately, but discussion-wise, I think I'll go to Mr. Hames to see what he has to say about them, and then go to the solicitor to sh have him share his opinion, which we have in writing, but I don't know if everyone has. So, go ahead. All right. Um, I did file these four petitions. Uh, the town solicitor has some objections as to the uh, process or to the wording, so I'd like to withdraw the petition for 22. 24 and 25. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, 
right now they're in front of us, so they can't really be withdrawn per se. We'd have to, we still have to vote. The last, the next step in the process is, if you see in the motion, we have to either mark it as accepted, and then it goes forward to the process of collecting signatures to put it on a ballot, or it's marked invalid if it's not, if, if it doesn't comport with the charter. So that's what this discussion is. So you're indicating to us so that three of the four you're no longer really interested in. Three of the four. I talked to the town clerk today to withdraw it this afternoon. She said I could probably come here and withdraw it. I also talked to uh, an attorney and he said the same thing. So withdrawing these three because of his objections, I have reworded them and resubmitted them to the town clerk. And I do believe the uh, town solicitor has a copy of the new ones, which are worded to more what he is looking for, if I'm not mistaken. It's just at this part of the process where you are, when is that it's not, they've, they've, they've come to us, so they can't be withdrawn and put on the agenda. So, but we can, but we can, no, I mean, we take that into consideration in the discussion, obviously. So, with that being said, if you have nothing to add, no. okay, well, well, I'm going to turn it over to the slide. I, I don't know what his, I know what his objections are, but. Uh, well, I want him to summarize those, so um, if you could talk about the four of these. Even if the, the 22, 23, 24, and 25, and we'll take each separately. Okay, well, I'm not going to read um, um, Mr. Haynes' uh, petition uh, in its totality, but I'll, I'll, I'll summarize it. So the first one was submitted to the clerk in date stamp January 18, 2019. Um, and in the petition, um, Mr. Haynes had um, expressed an interest not to sell the Belmont building and to continue with renovations of the Belmont building. Um, I have submitted a written opinion as I'm required to do, and I found the petition to be invalid uh, because the petition actually predated um, the date the council voted to sell the building. Um, so the petition was dated the 18th, the town council voted to um, sell the building thereafter. Uh, so I found it to be invalid because it was filed on time. Um, the next one on the agenda is the um, voter initiative entitled Recall, uh, also submitted by Mr. Haynes, uh, date stamp January 23rd, 2019. This one, um, this one is, is a little bit trickier um, in the sense that I think the, the subject matter is proper. Um, the subject, pro uh, subject matter is proper but the form in which um, it, is, it is laid out and in which it was submitted is lacking. Um, and so I, I really don't have, a, I don't have the wherewithal to say, um, you know, Mr. Hang, you should reword it. Um, so I, I found it to be not legally valid um, because it really doesn't ask for anything. It makes a statement. And so the petition says, in part, I hereby petition the Narragansett Town Council for the following recall. Um, it, it, it simply states recall, followed by procedures. It does not request that the Town Council take specific actions, such as amending the Town Charter or enacting a new ordinance or a resolution or a law. So I found it lacking in specificity, and, um, and I think that could easily be addressed, but as it's written, I found it to be uh, invalid for those reasons. Um, the next petition um, Mr. Haim submitted um, was to reverse the decision to sell the Belmont building. Date stamp January 23rd, 2019. Um, I also found that to be invalid because, illegally invalid, because the petition did not seek to enact and or rescind a town law, regulation, ordinance, or resolution. Uh, those are things that are spelled out specifically in the charter. Uh, so for those reasons, um, I found that to be invalid. Um, and the last petition filed at that time, um, Mr. Hantai, I just received them today, so I haven't read the new ones to be completely frank. Um, the, the last one that I had opined on um, was date stamp 20, January 23rd, 2019, uh, and that petition was to renovate the Belmont building in part. 
And again, I found that to be legally invalid uh, because it did not seek to enact and or rescind a town law, regulation, ordinance, or resolution as um, required in the charter. Uh, that's a summary of the, of the four that I received, um, the first being January 18, and the remaining three on January 27th. So the voter initiative process um, basically is, allows um, an item to be put before the council, but it has to be a regulation, an ordinance, a law, or a resolution that um, is either being enacted or changed. So for example, if somebody didn't like our height limits on houses, they could that would be a, that would be a perfect fit for this. And they said we want to change that to 40 feet or to 30 feet. Right now it's 35 feet. So. Um, so with that in mind, and with the feedback from um, Mr. Haynes regarding these, so item 22 is the one before us. So item 22 is, um, I'm going to, if the, uh, I'm going to see if there's any discussion from the council on, uh, we have to, we, we as a council have to, we get the advice from the solicitor, the steps in the process are, the clerk sends the solicitor, solicitor sends it to us. It's kind of important for us to follow the procedure here because it's the first time in, many people's memory, they remember an initiative process. So again, it can't come from, clerk receives it, sends it to the solicitor, solicitor has 14 days to provide us an opinion right now, and then we have to decide whether we're gonna mark it accepted or invalid. So I'll be looking for a motion on 22 to mark it one of those two things. I move that motion. I move the motion to make it invalid. Sorry. Second. Okay, so discussion on item 22, and this was one that Mr. Hames said he also was not interested in pursuing anymore at this time. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion approved 5 to 0. Item 23 is a motion to receive and make a determination on the validity of a voter initiative entitled recall. So, again, I'll be looking for a motion to accept this or deem it invalid. I'll make the motion uh, to call it invalid. I, um, this is this is the one that lacks specificity, Mr. Hames. Uh, just to point out what the uh, town charter says, that there's only several reasons that you can deny this, and that's if they violate state or federal laws. Uh, and that, according to the attorney, is the only reason that you can invalidate anything. Or state or federal statutes or common law. It says that in the charter, too. That just is the Constitution. Okay. The, so, well, that's important. That's an important omission. When what what uh, what state common or federal law does this violate? This the, the it, we, what we have here is that it was it's not a, um, it lacks specificity is what the solicitor advised us. That's so I ask you, which common state or federal law does it violate? I don't have that answer for you. The, the, the advisory opinion from him was the so lack of specificity. So what you say, does, you don't think it violates federal and state law? I'm going on the advice of the solicitor on the lacking specificity and that, that, and, and that it doesn't lay out the whole process. So, um, it, we're, not, we're not getting in it whole thing on this, okay? He's re Mr. Haynes is submitting new ones, so we need that to replace these, right? So, all right, um, any other discussion from the council? Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. Mark, the three that were just dismissed or that were, you know, not valid because of specificity, is because they don't address a certain ordinance. They don't address a certain issue, is that correct? Uh, the three, Patrick, uh, excluding recall, right. is true. Uh, they don't address a specific ordinance regulation. Um, and the recall, it's, in, in, it's important. Um, it is somewhat confusing, and I, I'm, I'm not going to suggest that this is the best drafted um, uh, chapter I've ever read. Um, but right in the beginning of Chapter 4, Section 1-4-1, um, the process is laid out. Uh, what the intent of the process was, and it was to permit voters to, I'm going to read it verbatim, the process shall permit voters to enact and or rescind town laws, regulations, ordinances, and resolutions. Um, 
We don't have any of these in these two. Correct. And uh, on the recall, um, I, as I said, I think it could be revised and, and, and move forward uh, quite easily. Uh, there could be a request to enact it, you know, to amend the charter to, to include that or to adopt an ordinance. Uh, that's, that's much easier, I think, to address. Um, and I think um, with, with some more forethought on how that recall process would work uh, would be helpful. So I, I do think it's appropriate. I just don't think it was, it was properly submitted. On the others, it's really not addressing um, any of the things that's uh, ex uh, expressly set out in the, in the chat. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I have submitted a new one to follow those guidelines as well on the recall. But the recall is taken almost word for word from West Village from their charter. So it's, uh, I know it's a little bit confusing, but that's word for word for what they have in West Village. Under our charter, though, we have to mark them either accepted or invalid. We don't have a remand. No, no, I, I'm not debating. I'm just saying we don't have, you know, in in, the, in in legal circles when there's an appeal or something, you can remand it and send it back to the applicant. But that's not an option here under the way the charter works. Um, all right, all in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Motion approved five to zero. Item number twenty four. A motion to receive and make a determination on the validity of a voter initiative to reverse the vote to sell the Belmont building. Again, I'll be looking for a motion to uh, mark invalid or mark I'll make the motion. Uh, to mark it invalid. Is there a second? Okay. All right. Discussion. So this, um, the basic um, thing is this one predated. This was the one that predated. Of the actual vote. Uh, um, I, I, I thought the first one we addressed was the one that predated, but I, I could be wrong. So, I thought number 22, uh, well, I think, I think Mr. Hanks had submitted one that predated the motion then resubmitted it. So, I thought the first one about okay, I'm uh, sorry, I misspoke then. I apologize. Yeah. Um, So it, it, one predated, but all three don't address. And yeah, the word is I, the resolution. Or <coughs> and twenty-two was renovations. Um, so renovations was received. You're, you're correct, Matt. Um, renovations was received in date stamp January twenty-third. So um, it's the same explanation, but you're you're correct. So uh, that would have been the January eighteenth, and would have been on time. All, right, all in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed, motion approved 5 to 0. And item number 25 is a motion to receive and make a determination on the validity of a voter initiative to use bond funds to renovate the Belmont building. Um, I'll make that motion. I just have a quick question. These are regular motions, just like all the others, right? So are these open to public comment? The, because they've withdrawn, the case has essentially withdrawn, it seemed a little silly to go into a long discussion of them. Um, motion, it, it, but again, what's the motion? Is it a motion to it make this mark accepted or invalid? A uh, motion to make it invalid. Sorry. All right. Any discussion on that? Oh. Go ahead. Um, I mean, you understand. Oh, I understand. You get it. I, I mean, understand. What caught a star of 23 yeah. Second Street? It was just a minor issue that I, uh, the solicitor mentioned. And then you reread it properly, I believe. We said that the voter initiative is to put on the ballot, where Mr. Maddox, you said the voter initiative is to come to the council. There's a big difference. A voter initiative that goes, it's passed, the ballot, goes to a vote. It doesn't come to the council. That's the whole idea of the voter initiative, is to have the voters, the majority, make law or determination. And I think again, I think this, it got confused or misworded that the voter initiative doesn't come to the council. It doesn't come, no, but, it, it, but, but so the, the process, I'm going to clarify the process. The process, process. Goes, I'm the process. The applicant files the petition with the town clerk. Town clerk marks it filed. Town clerk immediately forwards the petition to the town solicitor. Town solicitor submits its written opinion within 14 days. At the next town council meeting, we then have to mark it invalid or accepted. If it's accepted, it goes out for collection of signatures for 120 days. 
and then it goes on to the next regular election ballot, which would be 2020, if those signatures are collected. I've left out a few steps about our voting campaign. So, so, so it does come, so I didn't, I, I know that voter initiative doesn't come to the council because it's voter initiative. I just initiative. wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Vangovich. the invalidity of this, and there's one, two reasons. One, is there a Belmont building legally? Answer, no. We voted on the old IGA market, or renovate the current library. There is, I have no problem with the old IGA market. I have a problem with the unconnected Pear Liquor Store and with the unconnected, beautifully structured outward building, but internally useless second floor, which is not connected to the, to the store the, uh, and connected wobbly to the liquor store. Uh, we've just got to, when we discuss this, please, Remember, there are three separate unconnected buildings. Now, if there ever was a, another reason to have a mediator, it's this meeting. We must mediate this problem. Uh, we don't want to have the expense, a very expensive RFP for one or two buildings. I don't want to spend money for a special election because I truly believe a mediator can change this situation. I think a mediator has a good chance to get this uh, conflict peacefully resolved. Uh, and by the way, we can't be for, uh, to be out 2.8 million, we can't afford three or four hundred thousand for an architect or more. Please, let's get a mediator. We can solve this much nicer than this way. All right, is there any further discussion from the council? All right, Paul in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved five to zero. Item 26 is a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing a special election in accordance with all local, state, or island board of elections and federal election regulations to be scheduled on Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. Okay. I need the motion. I move that motion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion this item comes from um, Mr. Pugh and Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, no, no. Um, okay, we talked about this two weeks ago. Um, as you can see, the, this is the, what, 97th session of the Narragansett Town Council. In my living memory, I don't ever remember a, a voter initiative. Tonight we have four of them. So to stop the confusion and the contention, Jesse and I, that we have a special election, which the last one cost uh, a little research, cost $15,000. I think that's short money to straighten out this uh, mess that we find ourselves in on the library question. So basically, it's we can get this done uh, hopefully by May 7th an up and down vote, and the basic question would be should the town of Narragansett move the Murray Lugens Library to the town-owned IGA slash Belmont Market Space, renovate and update the said space with all previously approved monies and rename it the Narragansett Pay Free Library. So it's an up and down vote, yes or no. End all this um, contention from the one side that uh, voted for a bond and, and they feel disenfranchised because we're almost here. The RFP didn't go out. We didn't follow through with the bond. And there's another side that felt that they.
voted for a bond for the library, but not in that particular space. So that's the confusion. That's the, the, the nuts of it. So I, I think it's something that can be resolved in a basic all-American apple pie election. Be like a Disney movie from the 70s, for God's sake. <laughs> Very straightforward, up and down vote. Both sides can rally. And um, what are your thoughts, gentlemen? Ladies and gentlemen. What does everyone think of the thing? <clears throat> so I think at the last council, this was presented and we voted no for it, Patrick. Wasn't this presented in the last council? No, no, this was it. This is I, we talked about. It. I talked about it, but this is a agenda item. This, this. So it wasn't brought up in the last council. Oh, it was brought up. We discussed it. Well, what would happen? Well, I I said I'm going to bring it in the next meeting. Did you say the last council? Not last last council. council. Last council. Yes. It was never on the agenda at any past oh, council. It was never on the agenda. Oh, you mean the oh, you mean two years ago when Joe broke up? No, it was never on the agenda. It was discussed. Though. It was discussed, but it was asked for a special. That was for the 2018. This past election. This past election. Right. So if we put it on at this past election, it wouldn't cost the town anything. Well, fifteen thousand dollars. We can continue to fight and battle for the next twenty months. Yeah. Well, we can end it in two months. Right. So I mean, you know, is that the plan to battle for two years? Well, I'm here. I'm okay. here. You know, I, I, listen, I'm, I just I'm wanted to be clear. Right. Yeah, it is actually the plan. Yeah, okay. I, I, okay, that's what I, that, I, I mean, mean, that's important information to know. I mean, you know, a lot, of, a lot of voters out there on both sides feel disenfranchised on the library question. We have an opportunity in our charter to correct it. For a short $15,000, $20,000, I think it will. The fact that you think that you know that, that close election and having a three vote block just overrules sixty seven percent and we're not gonna fight that is pretty telling to me. The people voted for it. It doesn't just get ignored because you have three people on the council. So I'm not just um, I do have a question uh, for you. And I think it's going to maybe lend a little clarity to why the building went up for sale so quickly. But, um, you know, just for transparency, I'd like to ask you, have, have you or anyone you know spoken to any person or business at any time about purchasing the Belmont building? I have not, and as you know, we have this item, we would have an executive session on it. So, okay, so I have not. So I anyone you want have? to, I have not spoken to anybody so on, on that. That's why I put it on because I knew that people would be probably coming to us. So, All right. Well, thank you, you for know. saying that on the record. Appreciate it. Um, so for this item, so fifteen thousand dollars for this election, for the special election, we can have it at three polling stations. So we don't have to have the full the full layout. We could have one central, one in south end, one in the north end. We don't have to close any schools. We could do it on a Tuesday. Um, the funding for that would come out of the $300,000 town contingency. So no effect on any programs, any projects, no taxes are raised. Literally, it's, it's a negligible amount of money in the grand scheme of it. It will affect nothing in any way. Uh, every, I mean, if expenses are early reason, Ricky, we spent, the last town council approved $26,000 in a unanimous vote, no discussion, to paint this assembly room. I don't think anyone sitting here is admiring the walls in here right now. I would have done it for 12. So 26,000. Uh, on this agenda tonight, we have 13,000 for a new lawnmower, which I think is fine, uh, but that's $13,000 for a lawnmower. Yeah, uh, so expense, I just don't really see how that is gonna factor into this. Um, the only thing that I can see factoring in is you possibly Understanding that it's probably not going to go the way you want it to go, so you don't want to have the election. But I think the important thing is to see what the people want. The silent. Uh, 
I respect the people that have talked about the silent majority. I disagree. I don't think that is a majority. But I respect that opinion, and we don't know. We don't have the data to know that. But we can find that out. We can find it out definitively. We will pledge to follow the results of the election, and it's, it basically solves the issue. Uh, and then I want to bring up one other fact, I guess, from the last few months. So we had the uh, Neighborhood Associations Forum back in, I think it was late August or September of last year. Uh, there was a question on that forum uh, survey. The question was, as you oversee the design construction of the town's largest economic project, the new library, what is your top objective? So this is the survey that went out to all candidates in the last election. There was, it was multiple choice, or not multiple choice, but uh, there was four options. One was to ensure the new library is completed in the most cost of conscious manner. Number two was to ensure the new library is a first class state of the art facility. Number three, to continue to explore locations or options for the library. Number four, repeal the recent vote to purchase the Belmont property. So you basically have two options there that are, you're, you're saying you do not want to do this project. So number three or four, you could have just answered that way, and that clears it up. Me, Patrick, Susan Bonanno, um, Wynn, all, actually Wynn, Wynn was different. Uh, me, Patrick, and Susan said, complete this in the most cost-conscious manner. Wynn said, first class state of the art facility. Jill didn't answer. Um, one of those four, but did comment and said the deal has changed so significantly it should go back to the taxpayers to vote on the new terms. <laughs> Ricky didn't even object in any way. He answered the same way me and Patrick and Susan did and said, complete this project in the most cost conscious manner. Complete the project. Not not completed. Right. I want the best library in this town that the taxpayers can afford. I've said it, and I'll say it again. That's what I want. Okay, so why do you answer number three? Explore locations and options for the library. <coughs> they had already made a decision, Jesse. Oh, so you just <laughs> answered? No, <laughs> Jesse, there was already a decision made. What do you okay, mean? this isn't an argument back and forth. Okay. okay, so then you just said what you thought people wanted to hear. Got it. So people put words in your mouth. So you're seeing the one-issue candidates right here. Everybody at home, these are your one-issue candidates. I want everyone to be very clear. They've dragged us through this for two months. It's a disgrace. It is a disgrace. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. And then we've got our mob. Turn the, show the mob. Show the angry mob. Because this is what has to stop. Right? So this is... So you you to play play the vote? This has happened before in the, in the world of politics and municipal elections. There are people who run for office, and I, I'm not, I don't want to talk about these situations, where there's a bond item, and then they get elected, and they may say, I, would, I think this was a great idea to borrow $4 million for an athletic field. But then I came in and I saw what the finances of the town were, and you know what? I don't think we can borrow that amount. That's the job of the town council members, and that we could have had a candidate in the election who had done that. Now, I said in the election that I think the deal should have been repealed. That's how I answered that question, um, and I was consistent in the campaign on that. That was that was my point of view, and. Um, and but that was my view. There's other views, people's views evolved. Patrick's view evolved on this issue. Others have had evolution. I just explained how I went to the library to talk about when I was concerned about the terms of this Gilbane deal in the spring of 2017. And so, you know, I get a little bit irritated when people say, I haven't reached out or had that conversation. I wasn't really welcome. It wasn't, a, the conversation wasn't welcome. So, but, the other point to this whole thing is the, when we, when so many people have emailed and called about this, and we talk, voted on this in 2016, that was a vote to authorize borrowing. It was not a mandate to spend. Okay, and that's very important, and that's another misconception that needs to be cleared up. Again, I want everyone at home to understand that in 2016, it was a motion to authorize borrowing, not a mandate to spend 5.8 million dollars. So thank you. Is there any other comments? Matt, yes. Uh, why did you vote for the bond in, in uh, 
January 2016. You didn't want to expand or you didn't want to move to the I said I built my building was the plan A and I always said plan B was the existing site. So I said that pretty made. consistently. That you can watch the tape. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You were there. I and while I was there and, and, I, and I'd like to clarify. I think I think from day one, the, this whole library question, that you never wanted to do anything except just put lipstick on the library that we have now, do the minimum there, and that's it. I, I think this whole thing has been a farce from day one. You never wanted to expand the library. You never wanted to do any any time a rehab that, that would meet this, this group's needs because you have some kind of disdain for this library board. And, and I just don't understand. You campaigned on it, and then you voted against it, and you said, well, if, if we got the land, then I would probably be for it, for the Belmont. And then we did get the land, and you were still against it. So, I mean, I evolved because we got a better deal. You, you seem to keep switching horses midstream to fit your narrative and to get elected and to fit what's best for you, not what's best for the community, not what's best for the library and their needs. I mean, they're as good as a department as any, and they have needs, and we're not to fill them in that current location. And the people voted for it. So we have another bite at the apple on both sides. This is a simple up and down vote. We can end this question, and then we can all move on together as a town, whatever the people decide. Last year, I asked you to go have a cup of coffee with me and talk. Correct? I we went to a place down in there, near you in the north end of town. And at that time, I asked you to please consider to put this item on, put an agenda item on, to have a vote on this. The exact same thing that you just said to go. And we discussed it, and you you told me your thoughts and, and how strongly you felt that this was a good deal. That this was a good deal. You felt so much that you didn't you didn't want to put it back on the ballot to uh, for the for the twelve vote because it was a good deal. Well, so I, Patrick, so 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 you did vote for it, and and, and during excuse me, excuse me. So you you did vote. It was a three two vote, and I did not vote for it. I didn't vote for it then because I didn't believe it was a good deal then. Since then, I've had the opportunity to meet bond council, to meet with OLIS, to, to find out misconceptions that have been out there. And I think it's even the worst of a deal now. So Patrick, I would not vote for this. I am not going to vote for this this evening to go out for a referendum because it's even a worse deal now, now that I have facts that we didn't know before. So my answer is no on this. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the, the new facts are that we have a, you know, a business in place that's paying for the camp charges. We're, we're netting, a, you know, we're not netting, but we have an extra 22000 uh, a year that can go towards the maintenance of the, of the IGA Belmont space. I mean, uh, you know, and the thing is, I didn't want to put it on the ballot back in, uh, when, when we had coffee, because we didn't have 160 people at the meeting uh, objecting to the sale of the building. You know, I mean, there's, there's people, you need the, you there's, need I, I believe, there's, there's a lot of people who are disenfranchised because you guys, they voted for the bond, and you guys are just, are just going to kill this thing on three votes. And basically, you know, Jim, you won by 87 votes, and, and I think, you Doesn't know, matter. Well, the thing it is... Doesn't matter. There, there was the, the vote margin. I kind right, of you about the vote well, margin. Your is side's I let him finish, and then Jill's going to go. Your side's argument is on the bond vote, that people didn't understand what they were voting for. Okay? I think if we took an independent poll today, I think people have more buy-in for votes over the results of the 2018 town council election. <laughs> The votes in this election were really, really close. You know, Jesse, you did get, you got the top votes. You knocked on all the doors. Good for you. I mean, I really. Oh, that's, that's the only reason why, because I knocked on the doors. Jesse, I'll just say good for you. I'll give you a compliment. Take a compliment, right? You knocked on all the doors. You did a great job. You got the most votes. Um, but, but, Patrick, you got 123 votes less than Jesse. Matt, 332, 330. 
Rick, 548, and myself, uh, 603. There weren't a tremendous amount of votes separating us. You know, Ricky beat me by 55 votes. So to continue to hear about the fact I won by 87, to me is, I think you're trying to, to really hit into a battle of the person who came in behind me and try to, and try to reiterate what, what happened in our last term. Let's get past that. I mean, we won. The people who won, won. We have to deal with that. So you don't disenfranchise the whole population. <laughs> There was an election, and elections have officials to actually cast votes and make decisions. You might not like the decision, Patrick. There I've been there. I've been on your side last term. There was a major hic hiccup in one of the candidates' campaigns, that, and then now we've got to live with the results. So that, that's what happened. So, you know. Also, when 67% of the town votes for something and you drop, drop it and don't follow through, that's the definition of disenfranchisement. It's, it is. That's the word. Well, word. the part that you're leaving out conveniently, Jesse, is the fact is that, is that we discussed tonight that Matt has a proposal for an RFP that's going to go on for existing site. So again, the vote was either to renovate or to purchase. And so no, it's to renovate. Not. No, it wasn't. I mean, you're just it's saying. acquisition of real estate. It's not to renovate, and the bond council told us that. Jeff. Renovate and per purchase and renovate was the language. Correct. Purchase and renovate. So there's not clear, Jesse. Are we purchasing that's the this library? library? It is clear. It's Jesse, very clear. I am, I'm not going to You guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you can't be in the library. That's fine. No, keep it. It is. <laughs> okay, Jesse. Go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, come on now. Okay, first of all, does anyone realize how long how much money it more it's going to cost the longer this goes on. Eventually, this library is going to be built. But the cost is going to rise because construction costs always go up. So thank you for taking so much time. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for educating us so. But I'm sure none of us, none of us could possibly understand what a democracy is. And you are teaching us a new, a new meaning of democracy. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, Dr. Al Alba, 24 Eagles Nest Terrace. Um, my dad, Albert Alba Sr., has a long and storied history of speaking at the Narragansett town meetings, for bringing forth ideas that were best for his beloved Narragansett. His love for our town is what inspired me to get involved in an issue that my dad has always valued. Before all council members make their decision regarding the motion for residents to revote on the library, I have some points I would like you all to strongly consider. If the cost for the revote is approximately $15,000, that is a small price to pay because if we fail to proceed, we will lose several million dollars of bond money, which was approved by nearly 68% of the voters in Narragansett. In addition, all the money from all this reimbursement will be lost. To be fiscally smart, let's act now to take advantage of the available funding. If the motion for a new referendum fails tonight, the future cost to build the state-of-the-art library will go up greatly due to inflation in the future. Allowing a new vote this spring will enable the town to resolve the concerns of some voters who may have been unsure as to the location of the new library when they voted back in 2016. A new vote this spring will provide clarity for those council members for our reservations on proceeding and who voted to sell the town-owned property at Belmont location. If the town council votes against allowing the people to take a fresh look without just cause, it is an infringement on the foundations of democracy, as the vote for the approval of the bond for the library was clearly approved by the majority of voters. We were involved in the Revolutionary War as a result of taxation without representation. Our country was founded upon a set of beliefs that allow for a representative form of government with direct citizen participation. Please honor that and let us take another vote. citizens be taxed with our representation. People may take a second look at making their against their home. And some may even consider moving out of Narragansett as an unintended consequence of elected officials not upholding the will of the voters. Please don't let this happen. I urge you 
I strongly urge you to please approve this opportunity for a revote so all near against the presidents, including the much discussed silent majority, can all be heard. In conclusion, I, will, I would ask you to take the Belmont building off the market until the result of the upcoming election. As a democracy, we need to have a clear picture so that the residents' votes will be heard and there again on this important issue. Thank you very much. Voter initiatives. I withdrew those and I filed new ones. With this in mind, Patrick's motion to, uh, to have him an election. It will be the least expensive way. You think that you've got the silent majority out there? Well, I've heard people think they have the majority. The easiest way to do this is through this election, a special election. Because my initiatives are not going away. They're going to stay there. Go all the way to 2020. It just might not go all the way to 2020 unless we have this special election. Now, it costs a day, how much, Patrick, why we delay? $350 a day. $350 a day to delay this. So if you're interested in saving this town money, if you're interested in moving this town forward, you will have this election and you will abide by the results. Thank you. Thank you, Crowning Shield South Trail. Um, I'm just in talking in regards to when you were talking about when we elected you as officials and you're voting in our behalf. And so you guys are taking this as a mandate against the library, it sounds to me. So there's only been one person on this council who has made clear that they were against the library, and that's President Hannes. You guys both ran to move the for library forward. So how are the voters to know when they're voting that you are going to be against the library? So when you use that as a mandate against the library, it doesn't make sense because you guys ran for the library. We just heard that discussion today. So this mandate that we keep talking about and that we elected you as officials and all these vote counting and everything that we're talking about it has no validity because when we voted at the polls, I heard, I heard Ricky Lehman say many times he was for the library. So how are voters supposed to know when they go and make that vote that you guys are against it? It makes no sense. You can't use that argument. This, I guarantee you, will solve our problem and end this animosity. But uh, I'm against spending 50000 for this, but give me a mediator and this will work. Thank you. Um, is there any further discussion from the council? All in favor? One more. One more. All in favor? All in favor. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mayor. Thank you, Council President. Um, I didn't plan to speak this evening. Not that I'm coward after two weeks ago, I assure you. You know that. Um, but I have to address what we all witnessed just now. There's a new word in the American lexicon since 2016, and we just saw a marvelous example of it, a very instructive, teachable moment for us all. It's called gaslighting. And that's what Council Lawler just did to Councilman Murray, and I will not let it stand. She knows, she claims she had a cup of coffee with him prior to the election, to assist, to get his assistance to have a re-vote on the library when she knows those ballots were probably printed when she had a cup of coffee with him so that there was no opportunity to have a, a, a re-vote. And Councilwoman Lawler, did you lift one finger administratively to have that happen? Did you even 
make a motion? Did you put an agenda item on? Did you do anything? Did you consult with the town clerk? Did you consult with the town solicitor? Did you consult with the town manager? What did you do? We have no evidence of it. And that's what gaslighting looks like. You make a statement and we have no proof of it. You repeatedly said that people did not know for what they were voting, but you never lifted a finger. We have no evidence that you lifted a finger to have that put back on the ballot. And that's why Mr. Lehman was so confused tonight. He said, oh, wasn't this discussed? Wasn't this talked about? No, Mr. Lehman, it wasn't. It was mentioned over and over again, but there was no action taken. Nothing. Nothing concrete except showing up in a photograph with Mr. Gilbane the day the building was acquired and then gaslight us again and tell us that you did that in your capacity as an elected official because you felt it was incumbent upon you to do that. Therefore, every time, Ms. Lawler, when we see you around town, we don't know if you're acting out of genuine sincerity or authenticity. We can just assume you're there because you're an elected official. This is disgraceful. So are you. <laughs> Trudy Ball, 15 Harbor Island Road. I'm a new resident here. I've lived here for two and a half years, and I'm, I love the community, and I'm really impressed with the people that I've met, and it's a very vibrant place. And I'm just surprised and sort of sad that you wouldn't see um, the vision of uh, a place in the community that could be the center for um, the library and for other um, related activities, but that you have an opportunity to create something that's cutting edge, state of the art, and to be proud of. And I just, I don't know why this, that wouldn't be an opportunity that you would want to jump at to expand the vibrant community that already exists here. And in terms of the um, election, I just want to why you would not be in favor of What have you got to lose? You could, sh if, if the, um, the voters would speak, and so why wouldn't you agree to it? So that's, that's what I have to say. All right. As some of you know, I may not know. I'm a Trump supporter. I know, I know, I know. I've been smelling salt from the back room. I know you three are Trump supporters. And Trump would support this library. <laughs> Trump would be hand down. He would build the Library of Congress. The library. Okay? And then he'd try to get South Kingston to pay for it. <laughs> Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. No, no motion fails two to three. Unbelievable. Item number seven. Last item is open for a public comment. So this is a period where people um, from the community have an opportunity to share views on topics um, that are going on in the town. It's just ask people to um, uh, be respectful and adhere to the time limits. Um, all right. Yes, miss. Good evening. Um, I was asked by a resident who... Could you say your name and address, please? Um, if I could just say this first. No, if we need your name and address at the beginning. I'm actually doing this for somebody else and then for me. Okay? Because somebody couldn't be here because she can't... Oh, let me just explain. So I was asked by Sue M. Russo of 111 West Bay Drive to make the following statement. I sincerely hope that my voice is heard tonight. 
My comments concern my desire to restore the open forum to the start of town council meetings. On February 4th, I attended the town council meeting and was unable to speak on this issue because the person I brought to the meeting needed to leave for health reasons. Tonight, I am caring for my grandchildren during school vacation and they are too young to stay up since the open forum is still at the end of the meeting. Thus, once again, I am unable to speak. If the forum was at the start, I could bring my grandchildren to the meeting where they would witness democracy in action, including their grandmother speaking in public. They would see concerned residents and voters speaking up about issues that face their town and trying to make a better community. Hopefully, this includes a town council that is receptive to these comments and is not operating with a closed mindset. Restore the open forum to the start of the meeting. My name is Deborah Kopeck, 963 Point Judith Road. I echo Sue's comments um, as the location of open forum was one of the four issues I wanted to bring up, but Sue has done that for me. As you can see, it is late. <laughs> it's uh, 25 minutes to 10, and the place sort of emptied out. Um, I think it would be helpful if we restored open forum to its rightful time. Next, I'd like to learn what the outcome of the Solarize Narragansett project was. I've had solar panels on my roof for two and a half years. Essentially, my entire cost for electricity is covered by what National Grid pays me for the energy my panels produce. In this era of, era of overuse and waste of natural resources, I would like to know what the Town Council is planning with, regarding, with regard to the use of renewable energy, and I did hear a little bit about that tonight, to reduce the cost of electricity in town owned buildings, and especially what the short and long-term plan for coastal management is. I'd like to know the position of each town council member with regard to offshore wind and offshore drilling. These issues require solutions now, not in the future, but now. And I will say, in reference to a previous comment earlier this evening, that one of the areas that I know Jesse Pugh is really interested in, besides the library, is environmental issues. <clears throat> in the same vein, I would like to know what has become of the initiative introduced to this council last year to ban single-use plastic bags in retail businesses in Narragansett. Plastic bags are a serious danger to wildlife, and particularly to ocean-dwelling fish and mammals. This issue is a crisis, and for a community so engaged in its seashore and salt ponds, it is unconscionable not to have already imposed the ban. If you cannot answer these questions this evening, I'd really appreciate an answer at the next town council meeting. Finally, I want to express my absolute support for the library plan using the vacant building in the pier. I'm not really sure about the idea of having the um, election, but I know that that's an opportunity to reach across the aisle, if you will, to do something, to get a solution. Um, I also want to say that um, Meg talked about gaslighting, and another area of gaslighting is the use of the phrase silent majority. Uh, I don't think there is a silent majority, and frankly, I continue to wonder where the people who do not support the plan are, because those who do support it come here regularly. I've been here meeting after meeting, and so have so many other people. Some staying out later than they want to to make sure their voices are heard. Surely if more than four people are in opposition to the existing plan, they can show up and be heard too. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Um, Mr. Smith. My name is David Smith. I live at 24 Castle Road in your answer. In this room on Monday evening at 5.30, there will be a public hearing before the Rhode Island, Transportation, Rhode Island State Transportation Advisory Committee. The subject of the hearing will be uh, an amendment to the State uh, Transportation Improvement Plan, which will scoop $27 million out of transportation alternatives. Transportation alternatives includes bike paths, sidewalks, safe routes to school, and other improvements for pedestrians and cyclists, as well as tra some transit improvements. Specifically for the town of Narragansett, it will involve reduction of the amount of money allocated for completion of the South County bike path by $7 million. The money that will be, uh, the, resid the remnant of that money will not be allocated until 2025. So 90% of the money that would be left over is going to be, is scheduled for 2025, which means it's never going to happen. 
So this plan, a specific move within this $27 million reduction, is going to effectively kill the subcommittee like that path completion, period. Not going to be on the books. There are other effects in it. Uh, with uh, rating uh, green economy bond money that's parked in the, in the transportation alternative plan. So the, uh, the hearing will be before the, the Transportation Advisory Committee on, on Monday evening at 5.30 here. There will be a second uh, meeting in Providence on Thursday. It starts at 4 o'clock in the Department of Administration. At that point, that will end the uh, public comment period, and then uh, the Transportation Advisory Committee will vote on whether or not to recommend passage of this amendment. I really hope that you would attend that hearing, um, and I'm, I'm very glad that there are so many people left here tonight to, to, <laughs> to get the message to. So uh, again, please uh, attend to this issue, and thank you for your support. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up for us and for everyone at home. Again, that is Monday here in the town hall. Um, so thank you for, for that. Ms. Stewart.
for some say, well, anyway, he's a diabetic, he fell, his family found him. Uh, fortunately, I was taking a walk and talked to the daughter and, and the son. We don't have a neighborhood anymore. It's very discouraging. And so what can the town do about that? You know what you can do about it, and I'm not just talking about no more than four and all that. I'm talking about zoning, single-family homes, homes that are designated multifamily. They're not multifamily. They have 10 bedrooms. They're a dormitory. You have to have better control over what is happening in our town. If you want families to move in, you mentioned, oh, younger families who want to move in. Can they pay $600,000 for a three-bedroom house? No. It has to be affordable. We have many other important issues, and if you don't start agreeing and move forward on important things so that we once again can have students in our schools, we can have young families, young professionals, singles, moving in and feeling comfortable and wanting to come here. They can't afford it. You have to make over $100,000 in order to be able to afford a mortgage in our town. And those are statistics from statewide plan. Unless you're buying it as an investor. Airbnbs are now popping up in our neighborhood. They're not even registered. Do we know how many rentals and Airbnbs we have in our neighborhoods now? This is the reality, and thank you for letting me vent. And the other thing I do not appreciate is when people demean some of us who have been coming here for 18 years, and they say, oh, there's an elderly group in town who hates the students. Oh, there's an elderly group in town who are trying to change our laws. Yeah, well, the, too bad. Thank you, Ms. Sue. Thank you. should tell who can or cannot buy a house in Darkness. Um, it's a, a government to control the purchase of houses. Crazy. But let me, I, the reason I want to stand here, uh, I guess the Narragansett uh, tax rate, 9.95 per thousand. Not, not bad. North Kingston, I looked up. $18.59 in North Kingston. That's kind of almost double. And uh, so then I drove by a library, and I guess it brought up the idea that maybe people in charge are not spending enough time paying attention to money. Because obviously I've been to the library, it's a beautiful, it's a, Mr. Man it's a, it's a mansion activity. It's a beautiful place, you go in there and you look up, Water, water, beautiful. In fact, I stayed, I stayed there and I, I just looked out the window for half an hour. It was so nice. It was beautiful. And I'm sure they paid a lot of money for this mansion. And there was four cars in the parking lot. Pretty, pretty uh, disheartening to see almost nobody there. I guess it was like three o'clock in the afternoon. So I, I don't know what size and where. We should have a library, but we have to be very cost conscious on what we do on the details of what we're going to do for our library. And I, I'm hoping that uh, uh, I hit, we got the road thing going on, that $17 million bond mortgage thing. Uh, so already, I, I, I don't think that's hit full force on our, on our tax bill yet. So that, that's coming along. And uh, I don't know how the other things, I want to maintain a frugal schedule on every project, and, and, that's, and that starts with the library. We, it's a shame that we didn't have two or three or four prices to start with, so we could have had two or three or four alternatives before the whole thing. You know, I, I didn't hear them all, I guess. You know, I didn't, I didn't hear I didn't, didn't pay attention enough. I wish I would, you know, and during the discussion, not only the voting, but also have prices available on different ideas. Like, you know, I, I guess they, they thought they did a good job vetting all the alternatives and and uh, it been nice, I guess, to, to see the details on some of the lower cost 
approaches that we could have done, maybe. Uh, but I, I just, I want to, again, from a taxpayer point of view, I don't want to bring it up because you don't hear it too often, I guess. They pay, they pay twice as much as we North Kingston, double the taxes. Are we on that track? Uh, are we going to go there? Uh, I want you to consider that. I don't want to pay twice as much taxation here. And I want my children to pay that either. So maintain your vigilance on our money. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Patty. Stanley, I live in North Kingstown. Anyway, I just wanted to take this opportunity. Last time I spoke with some statistics that um, a lot of people were surprised at some of the numbers. And um, in last week's paper, um, it was stated that 10,000 people per month use of our library seems grossly inflated. So I felt like I needed to answer that. So July 2018, we had 13,918. August, 12,653. September, 10,779. October, 11,929. November, 9,405. December, 9,500. And in this January, we had 10,998. So we do have an average of 10,000 a month. Um, and the other thing is the online access, which um, includes, I would imagine, ebooks, which they access through our website. Um, and they also, we have a wireless um, system that counts how many people use that. So between those two items, we have 19,000 um, users for that. So I just wanted to let you know that we do have that kind of traffic coming in and out of the library. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lori. Uh, Lori Kelly, Wildfield Farm Road. Um, I want to go back to speak to uh, the earlier motion that Jill had on because I was not recognized to speak on that. So um, I, I want to go down sort of the road that uh, Jesse also brought up that established that in the charter, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, it gives certain rights to the library and the Library Board of Trustees. And 42-1 says, such library may include facilities and branches throughout the town as determined by the Board of Trustees. And I think that this is very important for a lot of reasons. You cannot remove programs from the library because you think that they should be in a different <coughs> venue. And to the solicitor's point, you can have movies on the beach, you can have movies in the elementary school. They will not be a library program. And the, sh the shortage of physical space is not children's bathrooms solely. There is an entire uh, consultant's report that addresses all the reasons that the current library at Narragansett is in waivers with the state. We do not meet many different uh, requirements for the state, and we have filed waivers for three years. It seems like the library of Narragansett does a fantastic job, and the people that go there are unaware that we are you know, operating in such dire circumstances. And then you have letter writers who say, oh, these numbers are grossly overstated. Well, it's clear these people are not coming to the library to see what the situation is there. <laughs> as far as the new, you know, it's unfortunate that we can't revoke this, we can't move forward, we're being stymied. But I want to go over again for the people that are concerned about costs and to Stanley to say, I wish we had low, we looked at all the options. We did look at all the options. This was actually the lowest cost option. And if you look at whoever was talking about Jamestown's uh, program right now, they're going to spend $2 million to put uh, 1,900 square feet on their 11,000 square foot library. So let's think about this. Jamestown is a town of 5,000 people, and yet their library is bigger than our current library. So you can see that the small town library that 
the council members talk about, you need to pay attention to the state mandates of physical space and programming as required by the state. Um, the oldest head was here on the January 14th workshop. And again, we were able to ask any questions. She said she has looked at this project and would expect the town to receive between 40 and 43% on this Belmont project. So $5.8 million bond, that's the most the town's on the hook for. 2.3 million would be the oldest conservative um, you know, repayment. If you take the 40%, that's 2.3. That's 3.5 million to build a state-of-the-art library. I do not understand how you can say there's a cost problem. Those are the facts. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn?